to, but there's an option to like try playing again and i usually just press that and enough times it'll it'll go through again uh, but like i said you can't download it i just don't want to download all these episodes to my xbox like gotcha. space is already is already hard enough but so that's the one one issue i've had so far other than that uh quantum break is a uh, is a is a lot of fun i'm enjoying Sweet. it quite a bit paul do we have you here yeah hello hey how's it going long time listener first time caller yeah Great. on the air what's your question uh fuck i should have thought this through <laughs> commit to the bit commit to yeah, the bit the bit yeah the oh. bit's gone bit's dead um so you just you just we just finished doing uh what we've been playing i was playing a quantum break which is what we were talking about cool i'm uh, excited to go back and listen to it you should because i th- i feel like i surprised john quite a bit yeah i well, i was I like want to know about it because i haven't upgraded to windows 10 so i can't get this until i do okay I was kind of like, I'm going to get this, but I don't know anything about it. Now all Sean's told me is completely sold me on it. Yeah, so um, I would recommend listening back when this uh, episode goes live. But um, now that you're on, uh, what have you been playing? Oh, dude. Let me tell you what I have been playing, because I know off the top of my head. Um, I've been playing The Division, actually. So, oh, funny boy. story. All you, right. The Division is an $80 Canadian game. Amazing. A friend of mine purchased four of them for one cent each. Excuse me? (laughs) Nice. Oh, wait, this was an Amazon thing, right? I don't know if it was Amazon or Newegg or something. It was an online thing for sure. No, it was Newegg. It was yesterday Newegg. I saw this deal. Yeah. Yeah. So four (laughs) copies for... What? For four cents total. So four... Did you pay him Uh, back? I mean, yeah, I was, he's like, no, just take it. I said, no, at least give me a link to your uh, Steam wish list so I can, like, we'll call it a trade okay. or something. So, like, I'll buy him a game on there. But, yo, that game for one cent is pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Most fair, games. You were, you were quite enjoying the beta, right? I was. The problem, the reason I wasn't getting it and uh, wasn't too into the idea of getting it right away until it got, like, super cheap was because I played two of the betas the one like closed one and then the open one and it was the exact same content both times and like spoiler alert it is again (laughs) at the beginning it's like all the beginning stuff okay so if anybody has played mmos before like just imagine getting to like level 20 ish three times and not seeing anything ahead of that and it's like oh i don't i really don't want to level again but, uh, I mean, I had no excuse, basically, at the, for it was basically free. So I installed it, and I've been playing it. I got finally past the point of the where the betas would end. So, like, this is all new content I'm seeing now okay. from here on. So it's been kind of cool. Uh, it gets pretty boring pretty quickly. Well, you're playing and, this, this something you've played three times now, right? Yeah, but even, like, the first time, it's a lot of very repetitive, uh, like, a lot of shooting like a lot of shooting because every enemy is a bullet sponge and that's how they like indicate difficulty it's not by like gameplay mechanics or stuff because it mm. never is with MMOs it's about how much damage they can soak which in a fantasy setting you know what I get it like if you're attacking a dragon with a dagger it's gonna take a long fucking time sure when you're t- attacking normal dudes on the street with guns there's no reason they should be able to take three headshots okay it's because so, they're magic. They are magic. Yeah. Maybe it's because they're wearing like a cool toque. <laughs> it kind of is <laughs> that, yeah. Like, not actually, but there's some cool toques in that game, man. Yeah, you got to find the toque with the best stats. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I've been playing that, and because of that, I've been playing the You Play Got Hacked Again and a mm. Russian Changed My Shit Around again. I was, talk- I was talking to someone else in town today that had the exact same thing happen to them. Good. I'm glad it's not just me. <laughs> That's actually refreshing. So, um, yeah, after somebody was like, dude, I think you were hacked unless you changed your name to Sanic or something like that. <laughs> I was like, no, I wouldn't change my name to Sanic, so I've probably been hacked. Sure enough, I go on Good to the Paul box. Sanic Fleck. Yep. Um, I go on to... The division last night like after coming home from work 
sure enough, dude, they created their own character, like a female character. So there, it, there was a new character in my division roster, and uh, it was all in Russian, everything. Nice. So I spent about half an hour going through each menu trying to find the language button. Oh man! I, I eventually found it. That's so, what. That's actually like a pretty good troll, like in like separately from hacking your account. That's pretty funny. Yeah, I I just found it funny that every time my UPlay has been hacked, it's one Russian. It's like a Russian person that just played my games for a little bit. So they leveled up my UPlay level by one. So I'm level 23 now instead of 22. You did it. They're just grinding for you. They're helping. I guess Normally you would need to pay someone in like China to do this. The problem is, is, is if they did like weird shit while playing the division under like my account, my account would be banned and I wouldn't be able to get it back because you play or Ubisoft or whoever has the worst customer support I have seen on the internet. Cause I, and believe me, like I've talked to some customer support before. These people almost know me by name. Now I've talked to them like four times in the last three months. There you so, go. Yeah, they're fucking terrible. And holy shit, how are we living in t uh, 2016 when two-step authentication isn't everywhere that you can spend money? It's absolutely mind-boggling. But anyways, the division is okay. All right. Especially if you can get it for one cent. I doubt many people will be able to do that after this, but you're playing the PC version, right? I'm playing PC, yes. Okay. Cool. Any yeah. play played anything else? Uh, just some phone games, like a lot of P-Cross on my phone lately. Uh, some Clash Royale, even though I hate the meta right now of spawning a bunch of things that can spawn a bunch of dudes. So, like, the whole time you're playing these days, it's just basically to crowd control until you get, like, a draw or until they win. It's fucking annoying. Um, what what P-Cross are you playing? It's called... I'll tell you in a second. I can't actually remember. It's called, like, know... Logic Square or okay, something. Okay, because I know there's no, like, P-Cross branded P-Cross. Mm. Mm-hmm. Logic Square, yeah. Okay. It's cool because you can download more and more puzzles, and I think it... Last time I did the math before I downloaded more puzzles, including, like, the Mega Puzzles, it had, like, 3,287 or something in it. Cool. So that is not going anywhere. Like, I'm not going to finish that anytime ever probably as long as they keep updating it speaking of mobile games the uh there's a new humble bundle mobile for you guys out I yeah. message you both there's some good games in there you should look into it um, i've been meaning to actually i yeah, totally yeah forgot i forgot about, about it grim fandango is on that remastered uh framed which i'm a i'm a quite a big fan of framed i heard good things about prune and i think there was more so i'm gonna look it up real quick um, paul what did you say that game was called again it's called Logic Square. Logic Square. Yeah. The one caveat to it is it is free, but after every puzzle, there's an ad mm. that you can close. But, like, it's not a video. You can just close out of it. But oh, it's he annoying. here's the big one. Lara Croft Go is on that. Uh, which Oh, that's uh, kind of cool. That's a great one. I'm pretty sure you're – I'm assuming you already had it, Paul. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, but, John, pretty sure you didn't pick that up yet. That game's no. great. Um. So, yeah, for under six bucks, you're getting three games I recommend, plus one I've heard great things about, and then more. So I would recommend you guys should look into that. If you it's just, it's just a Humble? Humble Mobile Bundle, yeah. So just go to Humble Bundle. and then you'll I, mean, like, I recommend everybody look into it if you don't have Lara Croft Go yet. That's if you have an Android edit. phone, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. These Humble Bundles are like the one reason I, I dislike my iPhone. Other than that, I, I'm, way, I'm pro iPhone, but. Sure. Yeah. Okay, anything else to mention? Uh, I'm just curious what John played because he didn't put in anything in the dock and I just want to know for my own sanity. Uh, King of Demons for the Super Nintendo and okay. Pretty Pretty Soldier Sailor Moon Another Story. It's a Sailor, oh it's a Sailor Moon RPG. Nice. Oh, that sounds dope. <laughs> you'll have to... You'll have to I knew you'd be into it episode. for some reason. Dude, I fucking love Sailor Moon. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in luck if you have a Super Nintendo if you want to borrow a game. Oh, you! Ha of course, you have the actual copy. What am I saying? Yeah, no, I they absolutely would love to one day. Yeah, it's it's English translated. I I partnered up with a company that does reproduction carts, and they sent it to me for free. Oh, which one? Uh, Cartridge Arcade. So they sent me that in King of Demons, and I've got a discount code for their store now that I give out to people. Nice. 
Yo, can you get me like a platinum like credit card or something from them? I don't think they have a platinum credit card. <laughs> what does that even mean? Okay. I don't know. I, they I sell video I games, Paul, not credit cards. <laughs> you know what? That's fair. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, I mean, I mean, you'll need these contacts when you're trying to stock your museum with like oh exotic. I was waiting for it. Yeah. Honestly, like I know some of the people John's friends with, he could actually just like stock a museum right now with his contacts in Calgary. So. I mean, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I've I have not been joking about this since day one. So. I mean, I bought four virtual boy games today i have got now got half the collection of the system i believe that's Yo, awesome one of his friends actually like basically has a museum he actually has more than john does what um you i want here's my request just get the full collection of engage titles that sounds I mean, terrible. you'll get them sooner or later. It's probably easier for me to get all the Virtual Boy games than it will be for the I'm not NBA saying, age. like, it's one or the other. Get everything. No, man, just email Jeff Gersman and ask him if he has an extra copy of each game laying around, because he <laughs> probably does. <laughs> he probably, he probably yeah, has a lot of them. That's true. Uh, let's move on to news. Yeah. Um, so last week, they did the price announcement for PlayStation VR, and we figured there's going to be a bundle... Uh, with the uh, camera and the move controllers, uh, yes, there is, and we were guessing it's going to be 500. We we also guessed maybe 450, 500 being too much. It's 500. So when that comes to North America, uh, you can get the full package. And they've already been selling full. those, and I, I hear they're they've been a little difficult because everyone's jumping on them and whatnot. But yeah, 500 dollars for the headset, the camera, two move controllers, and their version of Wii Sports. Sure. Cool. There did was we, a. Oh. Did we also talk about the PlayStation 4.5? I don't remember us talking about that last. That's week. no, that came out this week. It's on the list. Oh, is it? So why don't we just jump to it? It was, Oops, it was yeah. the last. Sorry, it's the very last thing. I goofed. Uh, but it's not a big deal. Let's just let's talk about it now. There's a, quite a bit of talk on maybe a PlayStation upgrade happening. Um, okay. P being uh, you know dubbed the PlayStation 4.5. That's the. It's a PlayStation that could run. Um, 4k resolution which that does make sense since blu-ray players are out now they can do 4k and you know there's 4k tvs obviously there's nothing concrete it's just a few developers are saying yes we've been looking at the at the playstation 4.5 this seems like a bit of a no-brainer especially with microsoft also saying we're thinking of doing these kind of you know yearly updates or whatever you know half steps as well um I think the same question applies to that uh, with this one as like, are you going to be able to play games like on the PlayStation 4 and they are only the 4.5? Uh, is it going to be useless like the new 3DS and which no one's taken advantage of it? How much is it going to segment the marketplace? Like, I mean, who really knows? But uh, that is a thing that is uh, being talked about. And I guess maybe maybe we'll hear more at E3. No, we have no idea. It's, it's all pretty uh, speculative at this moment. All right, back to the top. Uh, there was a survey last week. Again, it is just a survey that Microsoft was putting out. Uh, I think they even came back and mentioned, uh, we have no plans to do this, but that could just be PR talk. One of the questions, however, was, I'll just read it to you guys, You can, and I'll give you your four options. If the, cons okay. if the console digital game store for the console you owned offered customers the option to sell back their digital games to the store for 10% of the purchase price in store credit, would you be interested in such an offer? 10%? 10%. Here's your four options. Yes, okay. for many of my digital games. Yes, but only for a few digital games I no longer play. No, and I don't know. No. <laughs> no, you wouldn't sell them back for $6. I guess 7 in your case. All right, I guess we're talking like I was thinking like Xbox Live Arcade style like $10 games, not like full-blown commercial release $80 games. Well, I mean all games come digitally as well now. I guess that's true. So, I'm not the target market because I always buy physical, but I mean if I was digital, that's not a bad. Do you, wait, do you sell back your physical games now? No. No, so I would you do that digitally? No, I'm just saying if that was what I was looking at that'd be kind of interesting. I don't think it's enough. No. $6? Like, I mean, like, EB Games did more than that. 
for the most part. Um, what, what about you, uh, Paul? I'm trying to decide. You honestly. have an extensive Steam collection. There's got to be some games on there you don't need. Yeah, but like if we're talking Steam, I would be all for it because a lot of those games are from hum hum uh, humble bundles that I'm never going to play, and I would love to get just free money for that. I guess that would be really. We I bet you wouldn't be able to do games that you got a code for. That's what I figure. Yeah, for sure. Because um, again, that would just be free money. Uh, but again, ten percent, and and John mentioned like on the cheaper games, like some of those games you're looking at a dollar. Yeah, maybe. And if you're getting them on sale, you're you're twenty cents or something. Yeah, I mean, it's not really worth it, but like. There's a bunch of games that are like are pretty cool for like ten to twenty dollar range. So like if you trade it into games you're not gonna play anymore, like maybe you're done with Black Ops one forever or something because three's out now. Like then you could get a pretty cool game, maybe. I, that. I like I like the idea of it. You know, it spreads my dollar more. Ten percent is way too little That's the though. Thing. 10 it's is actually not too enough. little. It is it is definitely not enough. What percentage would you need? Twenty five to thirty three. A fourth to a third minimum. I feel like they should do it based on like time. Like if you have not played the game, then you should get like ninety percent to a hundred percent back. And then like within the an hour of gameplay it should like scale down. The longer you've played it, maybe the less that are real short though. That well that they would scale it proportionally. So if you play every ten minutes for this two hour game. Yeah, like it would go down like twenty percent or something like that. Right. The more you play the game, the less trade value it has, down to like a minimum of let's say twenty five percent. This this is this relates to because Steam currently now has a refund program, right? And it's like forty eight hours or something like I that. I thought it was two weeks. Two weeks, less than two hours. Right. So a lot of games are shorter than that, and you know I've I've heard plenty of people be like, "Is it bad of me? Like I I enjoyed this game, but technically I can send it back. I don't like I'm done with it." Um, yeah, kind of relates on that too. Uh, now that you're, but just you're getting a portion of it. I mean, the reason why they put in this program isn't for people that are like, Firewatch is too short. I'm just sending it back and getting my money. It's for people that are, are like, oh fuck, like Just Cause does not actually run on my computer. Can right. I get my money? But I back? bet there are definitely a group of people who are taking advantage of that. I would say. 50% to the majority probably take advantage of that. You know, just because I don't put my faith in people. Finish it as fast as possible and then get their refund. Oh, like I know like two people that I can name that do that. And I think they're discussing for it. But like, whatever. It's not my place to say, really, if they allow it. But I don't know. That it's such a gray area, dude. <laughs> like, yeah, I because... think. I think then that that becomes with the whole like scaling it thing is it's like, well, how do you know it took this specific length to finish this game? Like it becomes a, a real gray area again, or, yeah. or like what about games? It's like well, there is no finish. Like you can just kind of like it's a roguelike. You can kind of just keep playing it. Or like how about Geometry Wars? How long is that game? How do how do you put the scale on that game? It is two seconds. <laughs> you know, or yeah, Super Hexagon. You have two seconds. Yeah. Um, so that becomes a weird thing, and, and and then you're just like judging these games or putting weird weird arbitrary like titles on them. But yeah. anyway, this is all just completely speculative. They said someone came out and even said like I don't know where this survey got that question from. I can't remember who exactly from Microsoft mentioned that, but I'm kind of with you. Like uh like twenty five percent, fifteen dollars maybe. That, that that's a nicer sound if I paid sixty bucks for a game. Yeah, I, I could see myself doing that to some older games, but uh, yeah, because then you trade in your Call of Duty Four when you're done with it and get Super Meat Boy, and that's a great deal. That would that would be very cool. That would be very cool indeed. All right, what do we have this? Uh, there's a whole bunch of more Telltale games coming. Um, oh great! Okay. I don't know about you guys, but I'm finally hitting saturation on this. I hit saturation actually a long time ago. Me too. I, I definitely held out, and um, I saw you were the last one out of the people I know and talk to regularly. That's like I've played like every Telltale game because those people are like I played two. I have. I didn't play the Minecraft one, but uh, I have at least 
played an episode of every one of them. Anyway, um, I know how much you guys like The Walking Dead because season three is coming this fall. Yeah. I heard this one. I was just like, oh, man. Holy smokes. They're really killing that so series. So this fall, we're getting Walking Dead season they gotta, three. They got to make their money somehow. We're getting that more Minecraft episodes. Three more Minecraft episodes this year, apparently. Uh, the Batman Telltale game comes out this summer. That annoys me because I need to see what they do with it. That's so probably that... the one I'm most interested in because it's yeah. not it's Walking Dead again. Um, and don't forget, they also have a Marvel license coming next year. Fucking cr- yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, there's four more series or seasons at least uh, to look forward to in the next uh, year year's time at least. Because keep in mind, they're still doing uh, Walking Dead Michonne at the moment. Right. Um, but uh, that game never, uh, that company doesn't stop. That company does not stop. Um, all right. There was a report earlier this week um, that Nint- the Nintendo uh, Wii U, and this came from uh, Nikkei. Nikkei? Nikkei? I think um, Nikkei. The Japanese magazine that's usually pretty accurate, saying that the Wii U is going to be stopping production soon. Uh, Nintendo turned around and said that's not the case, but this seemed pretty accurate for about half the week. Uh, and everyone was like, it's time for the NX. Everyone's pretty much speculating it because of the NX coming up, but we still don't know if the NX is meant to be the replacement for the Wii U or if it's like a weird third pillar. Yeah, yeah. is it a is it a handheld? Is it a, a home console? Is it both? We have no idea. The the 3DS is starting to get long in the tooth, so I have a feeling they're probably. But they just brought out the the, the new 3DS. Yeah, but they also did that with the DSi. This the th- new 3DS is the DSi of the 3DS. I got that. How long was the DSi out before the 3DS came out? Uh, a year and a half, two years. Yeah, that's only okay. Because right. the new 3DS has, I don't think it's even been out for a year. It'll be a y- actually, it might have been a year last month. I think it was February it came out last year. Was- was it February? Okay, so it's only at a year. So, you know, that's true. If the NX came so out this, this fall. This could sync up. So if they an- introduce the NX at E3, and then it comes out the next year, there we go. I could see the NX coming out this fall. You think so? I could see it. Mm, I hope Nintendo doesn't rush it, because I feel like they do that well, with all that, of their it, systems, and it always causes a problem, so maybe they should fucking learn a lesson. Well, no, I think, I think this is pretty... <laughs> pretty standard like i'm thinking of the xbox and the playstation 4 when those e3s came out they announced here's the new console it'll be out this fall right or Mm -hmm. did they say like next year because i maybe it was just the release date maybe there was a whole year in between because i remember pre-ordering both those consoles the week of e3 so there was definitely some announcement at e3 maybe i know that nintendo when they announced the 3ds i think it didn't come out till the next year okay the 3DS also came out early in the year, didn't it? Or was it in like the fall? yeah, like March ish? Yeah, March ish. So I, maybe that, like that's a you know, I'm, I'm, I keep thinking of like November ish, but that's you know, in a half a year after that. So I, maybe that's the case. But the Wii U did come out in September, October, one of those two, or November. It was definitely the fall. Definitely the fall. Or maybe it wasn't. No, I'm thinking about the PS4 and Xbox One again. Because the Wii U came out the year before that. It was definitely during the school year, I can tell you that. I can tell you that for sure. None of this really seems to matter with the next article. Yeah, like I said, Nintendo <laughs> denied it. That could yeah. just be them talking, but they said, no, they're still... Uh, the K's on. usually been pretty on point with their articles about Nintendo, so... so. Yeah, so we don't know. So you Speaking... think they have a rogue insider? Speaking Maybe. Those, they got a source... Yeah, they definitely have a source. <laughs> Speaking of Nintendo-related news that might not be real, um, controller images came out. <laughs> yeah. And um, then was disproven by the original photographer, but then there were other people who released photos that looked slightly different enough to be real. Yeah, and people are saying, you know, these images do match the patents Nintendo filed uh, back in December. Um, so this could just be the start of the the you know the rumor train. Mm, for yeah. whatever this thing looks like um i don't think we need to t- talk about these rumors every week on the show because there's definitely going to be more uh rumors and weird controller configurations um but you know this is the kind of the first thing we've seen or heard i think we should follow the legacy man oh my god the legacy of the nx controller 
just every week here's the latest <laughs> nx update all right no, let's let's not um that. <laughs> how how would you guys describe this thing a piece of shit <laughs> Okay. I don't think I'd go that far, but uh, interesting choices if it's real, but I don't think it is. Yeah. It looks like an old, like, knockoff MP3 or something. Like, you would <laughs> put MP3s does. on I it. I could see that, like something from Sony or something. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, an, it's like a very skinny oval, two yeah. analog sticks that people were saying they look more like kind of circle pads. And yeah. then I guess the idea is like the it whole like thing hey is a screen. Arnold. Yeah. I was seeing Stewie and I was seeing <laughs> Hey Arnold. So it looks like their head, basically. Um, and then I guess the whole thing is a screen. Hmm. One, version, one version of it said that there were scroll wheels on the top for the shoulder buttons. I also saw. But I can't I remember that, that was from the debunked one or if that's from the one that no one's been able to disprove yet. That was from the first images that I, when I first saw it, I was seeing that, or I was reading that. Um, but anyway, I don't, that's a thing. It's a, it's weird. I don't, that makes it look like a handheld, right? Yeah. You know, it makes you think of like a, like the GBA. Uh, sure. But, or, or, you know, like the Vita or something, but. Yeah. Or I'm getting more of Sony Vita vibe for sure. Yeah. Mm. Now that I think about it. Um, I don't like my screens being that exposed, man. I want to like I'm gonna have to get like a case. Anyway, Hopefully, it I comes like with that one. Screen shape, at all. Yeah, that also looks like it's a pain in the ass to hold, which is what makes me think that's not it. Like at most, that's a dev unit, and it will yep. not be the final controller. I did see um like a mock up of this with like hand grip add ons, kind of mm. like kind of how the Vita has those ones you can get. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, to make it look more like a controller. Anyway. Um back to news that is actually happening. Sony is closing Evolution Studios, the people behind Drive Club and Motorstorm. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah. Motorstorm was kind of cool, man. It was I'm my surprised first we game. never got a uh, PlayStation 4 Motorstorm. Yeah. I yeah. Too, actually. Those are usually like good like almost tech demos of like look how powerful this thing is. We're going to blow up these vehicles. And it's fun. It's a fun little racing thing. Yep. Uh, I played a lot of um, one of the motor storms on the PlayStation 3 mm. yeah. demo unit in an HMV. Nice. And I Weird. own okay. one of the motor storms because it came with my t 3D TV. It's I still think shrinking. that was Arctic Edge or something like that. Yeah. That sounds yeah. Right. That sounds right. I never tried out the 3D, but I I could do that if I wanted to. Um, and then everyone did like everyone disliked uh, Drive Club, so there you go. Drive Club was a little too ambitious. And set up really some cool things. Got delayed Terribly. a lot. That Drive yeah. Club PlayStation Plus demo edition was a weird thing that yeah never happened. They they finally happened. they uh, bit the hand that fed them a little too much on that one. That was weird. Here's the best news of the week. Yeah. Jack Party Pack Three is coming. Okay. And it okay. includes Drawful Two. Thank sure. God. So like, drop the phone. Drawful Two is coming, guys. Okay. That was probably um, the biggest thing missing from uh, Party Pack 2. Was Drawful not in Party Pack 2? Nope. Nope. They replaced it with Bidiots. Oh, right. Oh, now I remember Jack Party Pack. And yes. Bidiots is terrible. <laughs> it It's so weird. That's a weird game thing. Yeah. 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 The more you think about it, the more you're like, no, he's right. It's terrible. Uh, I'm trying to see what else is in this, and it, this article's not telling me anything. What is this... Uh, Wait, Astro says Drawful 2 is separate. What? Wait, what? I don't know what my thing's saying. If it's separate... Then oh, actually, that is what the article what is. It says uh, Drawful 2 and Jackbox Party Pack 3 coming this year. That sucks. Wow. Oh, yeah, here it goes. Uh, the omission is a bit of clearer now that the Jackbox has announced it'll bring a standalone sequel, Drawful 2. That's a bummer, but I guess they well, realized I mean, that Drawful is the best then. one. Sequel will double the available colors from 1 to 2 and features enhanced streaming tools, including an audience mode that allows up to 10,000 spectators to play along and influence the game's outcome, as well as the ability to censor answers and drawings from trolls. Oh, people in the chat are saying Drawful 2 is summer of 2016 and the party pack is fall. Okay. Uh, that looks big. Uh, spring I'm seeing for Drawful 2, but fall indeed for party pack 3. I'm just reading the chat. I don't, I don't even I don't know what you're looking at. The article doesn't say. 
this was not well researched, but um, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's about as researched as I get. Yeah, um, uh, Jackbox is confirmed. Ruffle Two is not part of the bundle. There will be five new games in Party Pack Three, but they've not said what any of them are. I bet one of them is uh, you don't know Jack twenty sixteen or twenty seventeen. However, they do it. I think so. I guess they gave it a, a break. I could definitely. Wasn't it? Well, isn't one of those always in the Party Pack? Party. It wasn't in Party Pack Two. Party Pack Two sucked. Yeah. What is Party Pack Two? Bomb Squad, Bidiots, uh, Fibbage Two, which was the main game. Okay, I mean Fibbage is good. Uh, Quiplash XL. I don't remember Quiplash either. And that sound effect game, and I feel like I'm missing a sixth one. Remember that sound effect game being awful. That one was good for like a couple plays, and that was about it. People are saying Quiplash is fun. Which one's Quiplash? Is that the one where you make a joke? Yeah. Like okay, they give you like, right. like what's the last thing you hear from a pilot before you crash or something like that? Okay, that one was all right. That one, there was that one could bring the laughs. Yeah, but Fibbage yeah. Two, Quiplash XL, Bidiots, Earwax, which is the sound effect one, and Bomb Core, which was basically keep talking, no one explodes, but for four players. Right, right. Oh, and Bidiots was the one where like tons of people could play with you, right? Uh, no, Bidiots was six players. What was the one that was like super streaming? Oh, I'm thinking of like Fly Swatter from the Yeah, first you're thinking one. from the first one. Uh, yeah. j- that game sucked. Quiplash XL and Fibbage 2 both have uh, audience interaction. Okay. Uh, last bit of news uh, <clears throat> was sent in for by Mitchell, and it's just pricing information about uh, Killer Instinct Season 3. Nice. Uh, Killer Instinct Season 3 has been released. The Combo Breaker Pack is 20 bucks on Xbox One and PC. And includes eight new fighters, including Rash, Kim Wu, Arbiter, and Tusk. The Ultra Edition is 40 bucks on both platforms. It includes the eight fighters. And a VIP double XP boost. As well as retro costumes, accessory sets, retro color 7 for all new fighters, and 18,000 KI gold. Yay. Uh, the Supreme Edition is 60 bucks. And it's only 50 on the PC, so 60 on the Xbox One. Ooh. It includes everything, plus all of the previous Season 1 and 2 fighters, minus Shadow Jago. Yeah, Shadow Jago was like a, a weird like code you had to get at events. Oh, okay. The Xbox One version includes Killer Instinct Classic and Killer Instinct 2 Classic, which are both absent in the PC version. Oh, snap, son. Yeah, you got those if you bought seasons one and two of Killer Instinct on the Xbox John, you're the you're the resident Killer Instinct player. Are you excited for season three? Kinda. I kind of want to play as Rash and Arbiter. Arbiter of Halo fame. Yep. And Rash Rash of Battletoads fame. Bodies fame. No, Battletoads. I like the joke. It's good. Yep. Um. All right. Why don't we move into questions? Uh, top down perspective at gmail.com at TDP podcast, the Facebook group, our, John's PO box. Those are all great ways to send in questions. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll grab this first one. It's yeah. From Mitchell. Same okay. email. I recently saw Paul's opinions on frozen and he said okay. he doesn't like Olaf <laughs> uh, to put it politely. I don't <laughs> like him. I can see why some people wouldn't, but could you clarify what you guys hate about him? I also hate Olaf. I don't so, know. I, I never watched Frozen, so Frozen's yo. Not Frozen's great. actually kind of a cute little movie, actually. The it's only thing, good. the literally the only thing I know about Olaf is that he's voiced by one of the Daily Show's old writers. Oh, okay, uh, he's a snowman. Yeah, Olaf is the type of comedy that is made for kids. Is he basically the equivalent of the squirrel from Ice Age? Uh, yeah, probably. Yes. Well, yeah. Here's my I like Jar Jar Binks. Here's my mm. problem with Olaf. He is put in there just to like weirdly move the plot forward. Like at one point, there's a a player, not player, video games. Sorry, there's a <laughs> character who's trapped, and he just comes and saves them. And it's like, how did you know this person was here? And like, that's super convenient. Like, I I hate it. He just pops in, and he's like. Oh, it was real good that I randomly showed up and know exactly what's happening next. It's a weird plot movement device, and it's annoying. Yeah. For me, it's just that he is the kid-friendly comedy character, and 
there's no real like um like disney always usually has that character but a lot of times they do that character kind of smart and olaf is just like the dumb type of humor yeah that does that too frozen has that song let it go i'm not sure if you've heard of that dude it's the like the best disney song in a long time <laughs> where were you in uh 2012 14 <laughs> Where was I in 2014? 2014, when like everyone was out way into that song. I was listening to that song on repeat. All right. <laughs> uh, second question from Mitchell. I am playing through Mar uh, Super Mario Galaxy 2 again, and in the Twisty Trials Galaxy, one of the stars took me nearly 30 minutes in one playthrough of the level to get. Needless to say, I was frustrated throughout the entire ordeal. What is the most vivid and or recent time this has happened to one of you guys? So when was the last time you got frustrated with a game? Oh my god. Like in every general? day. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Clash Royale is a phone game and it makes me want to throw my phone across the fucking room every time I play it. Uh, probably Ori in the Blind Forest Definitive Edition. There's a couple like uh, like boss moments when you're like in when like the water's rising or the wind thing i was getting frustrated with that okay who's got the next one i'll take it uh sombrero mustache writes in and says as everyone on youtube knows minecraft is the most oversaturated thing on the site when did you guys start noticing minecraft videos why do you think everyone has lp the game to death and do you think there will ever be an end to minecraft videos and there's a second question here uh, do you want me to okay, read let's that one do the first hour? one first. Yeah. Let's do the first one. I guess I, I first started noticing them that when videos. like the beta was first out. Yeah. yeah. People yeah. talking about, hey, this is something worth looking at. So a long time ago. Same. Uh, there will never be an end to Minecraft videos. There will only ever be there will only ever be an end to Minecraft videos if Microsoft starts like banning them or like taking them down. I don't think so. Kids love Minecraft. Can I ask you guys a question? Yeah, yeah. What the hell is a Minecraft video? I've never actually like watched one. Like, uh, what does it contain? You literally just play Minecraft. Uh, there's a bunch of people What's there. The LP? Yeah, they can either yeah, just totally. they can either just do it themed around something. Like, oh, here's this mod, so we're gonna have fun with this mod. Oh, we've made a challenge. We're just gonna do that. They're just gonna do story mode. They're just gonna do survival mode. They're gonna, like, I have one life. If I die, oh. that's it. Stuff like that. So, like what uh, Eno used to do with his friend there. Yeah. Oh. Okay. It's then, it's yeah, whatever I you want it to be. Easy. And that's specific that's like exactly why uh it's still around and why everyone's done it to death cuz it's a sandbox game. You can kind of just do whatever you want and a lot of people like that. Kids love it. They ad they love it and it's never going to go away. There will always be it's like Mario Kart. There's it's it's going to be someone's first thing forever. And kids can't tell when things are bad. So even if Microsoft screwed it up, they don't care. So we're, we will lose Minecraft when we lose Star Wars. Wait, why do we want to lose Minecraft? I think that game's okay. No, I don't no, think I don't think we want to, but I'm sure people are sick of the oversaturation oh, of it. He was like just saying, will. when do you think will be the end? And I'm saying y uh -oh. you'll die before there's an end. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> on that somber note... Mm -hmm. Yeah, the next part of the question is also in the latest Hitman game, they're asking whether fans want to have the ability to kill Gary Cole or Gary Busey. Uh, so, top 10 perspective, who do you want to kill, Gary Cole or Gary Busey? Gary Busey is an actor. Uh, Gary Cole is probably best known as Harvey Birdman's voice actor. I mean, Gary Cole's an actor, too. But I, I, I know him better as Harvey Birdman, so. Gary Busey hasn't done much lately. Gary Cole's still doing stuff. Uh... I, have you guys seen like the Twitter ads for this? Have like, you seen the video for yeah. it? It's pretty funny. I haven't seen no. the video, but the Twitter ad, they're like yelling at each other or something. Yeah, that's exactly it's what the everywhere. video is. It's, it's everywhere. It's just them saying, trying to show who's the worst person who deserves to be killed. Paul, who do you think Hitman should take out? Like, out of these two, Busey, but like Donald Trump. Okay. Just in general. All right. He needs to be stopped, man. <laughs> Gary Busey did nothing wrong. 
That's my platform, 2016 running against Trump. Mm -hmm. Okay, Andy writes in. Excuse me. Have you heard of this cool YouTube channel that posts very high-quality game rips named Gilva Sunner? Yep, Gilva Sunner. Gilva Sunner? The quality of the rips on the channel are amazing, just like his rip of the fortress theme in Yoshi's Island, and then he puts in a link. Or just listen to how crisp this Gerudo's Valley theme is. Link, how could you forget this amazing song, Mario 64, Link. The channel has such high quality. Even Steven Totillo from Kotaku wrote an article on it at one point, though the article seems to be gone now. I hadn't heard about it, but I, I haven't I, either. I, I, I have I've heard are, of them, yeah. Those are some good sounding songs. Are they? Okay, I'm excited to listen to them later. On a more serious note, I've come to terms that I may or may not be a whale. For those that don't know, a whale is a term used to describe a high-stakes gambler. However, the term is very fitting when it comes to mobile games with a rolling aspect to it. Throughout the past four years, I've gotten heavily involved with many free-to-play mobile games such as Puzzles and Dragons, Love uh, Love Live, okay, Love, Love yeah. Live, School Idol Festival, Fate slash Grand Order, etc. Each of these games has a rolling slash gacha aspect to them. On a whim, I was browsing through my purchase history and found the numbers to be a bit surprising, but somewhat expected. Throughout these past years, I've spent a total of at least 28,000 USD. Yeah. That's insane. That is a whale. That is a whale, definitely. (laughs) Holy smokes. Oh, dude, I'm so sorry. (laughs) Anyways, and before anyone asked... Yes, my financial situation is incredibly stable. That's good. Okay, at least you're not an idiot. Thinking back on it now, the me seven years ago would have deemed this type of action a waste. I guess people change a lot in seven years' time. On to the questions. What are your opinions on whales and their whaling? (laughs) That's a great term. (laughs) And their whaling. Um, You know what? Like it's fine, dude. <laughs> if, yeah, if, do, if yeah. you can support it, do it. Exactly. Yeah. Like, if you're enjoying it, like if it's if it's how you want to play it, go for it. I I wouldn't. I I don't have the money to do that either. Uh, like at that scale for just like you know like one game or whatever. Or I guess he's played a few of them, but I yeah. I put maybe like sixty dollars into a game and then maybe another like twenty when the DLC's out, and that's usually it. That's usually the end of that game. Yeah, like. If you have the money and you're still having fun with it, do what you want. And you're helping keep it free for other people. Like, for example, That's, probably the only reason yeah. Record Keeper is so accessible is because people are willing to spend money on it. That's yeah. a really good point. Like, whales are typically, like, w- less than a percentage of the audience, but they pay give so much in, that it covers the rest. And here's a good example. Yeah. Um, yeah. So as long as you're not putting yourself in financial trouble, do what you want. Yeah, yeah as, as long as you're not like one of those kids that has access to the mom's credit card just because it's tied to the Apple account and they just keep charging stuff. Yeah. And it's like, what is this? I We're... hate hearing those stories. It gives me like a heart attack every time. Um, Jesus, man. But, but like you should consider actually starting up like if you don't have one already, a Twitch channel and just like streaming you unboxing shit because people eat that shit up. <laughs> and you're doing it already anyway. Uh-huh. So <laughs> I'm just saying you could be getting paid to open up boxes and crates or whatever you're buying uh his he has a few more questions here oh no okay do you have any friends who happen to whale uh no yeah sorry it looks like a part of it was cut off i'm looking at yeah uh do you have any friends who happen to whale and if you were given the time resources and had the passion to do so would you whale for what would you whale on uh, I mean, technically, I could, but I just don't have the draw to it. Like, I'll pay money in a game for something if I feel like I've gotten enjoyment out of it, even just to support somebody, like if it's a cheap game. But, like, I, don't, I haven't... There's so many things I would rather spend my money on. That's fair, yeah. Than, than all that into, like, one game. Like I said, it's usually 60 bucks and then another 20 and that's the end of the game for me. Uh, so I, I I can't see myself wailing, but if I had to, has there been a game where it's like, I like this so much, I'm trying to, because I don't play that many microtransaction heavy games. Right. 
Um, Sombrero mustache in the chat got to me. He's like, I'm a literal whale because I'm fat. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> John, would you would you if I had the resources, keeper? I'd probably do that with record keeper. Yeah, but I yeah. would you have want to be really financially viable for that, right? But like knowing you, John, I think you take some pride in the like breaking free to play games and not having to spend money. <laughs> so, right. Well, I mean, this all comes down to like time versus money and how much is your time worth compared to you know actual dollars. And if you have the money, that that ratio changes, right? And yeah, that's, and that's this, and that ratio is different for everyone, um, but like, and and like even just like kids versus adults. When you're when you're a kid, you have so much free time, and then when you have an adult, when you're an adult, you have so much less free time, but you have so much more money. So that's yeah. how that, that's how it shifts, yeah. and and it, and it comes down to it's like, well, I only have a few minutes to play this, and this is how it works for everyone. I only have a few minutes to play this. Instead of spending that time just grinding stuff I've already done, I'm gonna drop three bucks and play something a little bit new in this game I like and sure. and that and that's how all this works. So uh what Tenmar said about Warframe is true and that's probably my answer. Like if I had the resources, I would probably just buy like every frame in Warframe and just like change up my playstyle every single time I played it. That's way too much money though. There's no way in hell I'd be able to do that <laughs> realistically. Mm. All right, Andrew has uh six questions here. Nice. First one, have you played the latest indie gem, Stardew Valley? I don't usually get super excited about new popular indie games, but this one fills the special uh, Harvest Moon-shaped hole in my heart. I haven't, and I want to play it so much, I wish I had the free time to do it. Yo, is that game more than Harvest Moon, though? Because, like, somebody's like, are you getting it? I said, it looks like Harvest Moon, so no, because I'm not a huge fan of those. I hear there said, is combat. But there's more it's, shit in It's that. Harvest Moon, Rune Factory, uh... Fuck! What is that? I've I've heard it more being Terraria because of uh because of the combat aspect. Well, I mean the combat's okay. optional, I believe, because you can gotta go into like for mining to do that. And like yo, you can bone like dudes and ladies in your room if you want or something. I mean, you got married in Harvest Moon, so I assume it to be the same thing. Okay. Like everyone yeah. in the town, I've I've been watching Reese play it a bunch. Uh, everyone in the town has like a relationship meter that you can build up. You can either learn learn more about them that way, or you can actually okay. like get in a relationship with them, get married. Uh, yeah. It it is very Harvest Moon, but it's got aspects of other games to kind of make it like a more than the sum of its parts, I guess. That makes me more interested in it. Actually, the words Rune Factory. You. the the internet's been blowing up about this game for the last few weeks like this is yeah. not a new thing and i i really wish i had time but like i've just been getting slammed with review games that i kind of have to play right now so question two what's the most insulting thing a game has said to you uh he says this is the most insulting thing that has come to his head and it's uh i don't know what game this is but it says you don't have enough balls i'm just gonna put this in the chat you don't have enough Oh, I see. There's a link here. What's the most insulting nice. thing a game has said to you? Uh, get the heck out of here, you nerd. What was that? What does that game, game that? look familiar? Uh, that game is that Love Life thing, I think. That's the idle game. Oh, okay. oh. The one mentioned okay. earlier? Yeah. Okay. Uh, the game I mentioned was uh, Bionic Commando. Oh, okay. That's all, right. That, all right. I thought you were saying Love Life was the one you mentioned. No. Um... I, I honestly had nothing coming to mind. And yeah, I read, I I read these questions anything. beforehand, so... I don't have anything. Yeah, I can't think of a time a game made fun of me. I'm sure there is one. I mean, anyway. whenever you lose in Mortal Kombat, Chao Kahn always go, you suck. Yeah. Okay, I that have had that pathetic. happen. Then, so there's yeah. that. Okay, all right. Actually, that was irritating. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> uh, are there any games that you're really excited for? Uh, Andrew is excited for Persona 5, Mirror's Edge, Overwatch, um, Tokyo Mirage Sessions, and Zelda U. I'm kind of excited for Quantum Break now after listening to Sean <laughs> talk about it. I'm Damn, I have to hear what he said about it. I'm going to listen to that after. Uh, I'm excited for Mirror's Edge. I'm excited for uh, Tokyo Mirage Sessions too. Yeah. That, that'll be a good uh, summertime game. What about you, Paul? Overwatch and Dark Souls 3. Dark Souls 3 is soon, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Technically, cool. it's out if I wanted to buy a Japanese copy. 
Oh, that's right. I, I that's right. Yep. Uh, you know what else I'm excited for? I'm excited for Pokemon Go. They released some screenshots yeah. of that, and I want I want that to be good. I mean, what about, the, uh, that sun and moon or whatever. I mean, I'll probably end up playing those because they're Pokemon, but I've, I'm more excited yeah. for the promise of Pokemon Go. I feel like gotcha. sun and moon is a safe bet, really. Ex- exactly. Pokemon games are usually safe bets. Yeah. 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 Um, all right. Question four. Big problem that collectors deal with is products going out of print. I don't see video game collectors having to deal with this as much. Have you found yourself dealing with this? Games go out of print, don't they? Like, yeah, all the time. Yeah. Yeah, when yeah. consoles end. So that's the whole point of retro game collecting. They're yeah. not making them anymore. Um yeah. I don't really collect games that much, uh so it's not an issue for me. Um but John, you seem to find the resources to collect them anyway. Yeah, cuz people there are people whose jobs are just to get these to sell to other people. So as long as they exist, you can find them. Yep. Like technically to be a collector, you have to want something that is out of print otherwise you're just a consumer yeah so i'm not really sure why but mitch in the uh chat said i need to track down double dash and i just wanted to agree that game is great okay question five everyone knows that timelines and long-running game franchises usually don't mix well what are some some of your favorite slash most convoluted timelines. Oh, God. And he says he really likes the Shimigami Tensei ones, and I will put the picture of that timeline in the chat. Oh, um, man. There we go. Oh, And I did I not know this was a thing, but Whoa. that's crazy. That That is super crazy. I cannot trump that. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, that, that pretty much is the one there. I'm going to give a quick shout-out in there. I'm glad Catherine is in there, even though it's not part of any timeline, but that game's great. Um... Oh, yeah, it's just in its own spot. Yeah, there's a few that are just kind of in their own spot. You know which one I couldn't find was Devil Survivor 1, which I did play, but I couldn't find it on there. Devil Survivor 2 is off to the side of beside Catherine. Where's Devil Survivor 1? What are you talking about? It's directly above it. It's the red above one. It was. Is okay, above... there we go. Cool. Oh, I yeah. can find it. Thank you. Now I it, found it. It was straight up. <laughs> I don't know why I couldn't find that. And I spent like a like a chunk of time. Like zoomed in. All right. Anyway. Other convoluted timelines. Um, I would say the Zelda one's kind of annoying when, when people try to make like a connection. Or when Nintendo sent out or put out that weird like, this is how they're connected. And it's like, what is, like, whatever. Yeah, right. Metroid's gotten a little silly. Yeah. Metroid's Just assume everything silly. is before Metroid Fusion. Mm-hmm. Right, I remember you going over that recently. Assassin's yep. Creed is probably my favorite convoluted timeline because uh, those jump all over the place, and I, f- I constantly forget what time period we're dealing with here. Yo, Super Mario. Weirdest timeline ever. It's true. It's true. That guy never gets older, except <laughs> when he changed from a baby to Mario. Right, right. And last, recently a friend... And, oh, move your cursor. There we go. Recently a friend and me co-opted uh, through the entirety of Never Alone. It took us a little over three hours to complete the main game and DLC. Although the game was good and enjoyable, I'm sure if the full asking price on Steam is worth... Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, probably not. I'm sure the word not yeah, is missing there. I think he says... Yeah, I think he means... It, I'm not sure if the full asking price on Steam is worth it. $15. What are your stances on short game length versus price? Do you guys remember Never Alone? That was that um, Inuit yep. game. It was yep. a PlayStation mm-hmm. Plus title. That is a was that cool was that fifteen dollars with the DLC or fifteen dollars plus DLC? I'm guessing since it says full asking price, sure. that would be with the DLC. I guess so. I, I the only reason I have it is it was a PlayStation Plus title, and that was before the DLC and such. If you got your enjoyment out of it, then no matter what the price is, you, it was worth it. I yeah, that's the that's the big thing. I've pay, I've paid much more for much shorter games, yeah, and I've still enjoyed it. I'm with John on this one. I'm not going to get on the soapbox tonight about this. Yeah, and we've met, I, I was even kind of touching about this earlier. Time versus money. This is completely subjective to everyone. You you know, yep. Some some people might not be into short games. Some people might love like narrative games, and a short thing is totally fine. Um, or some people might not have enough money to like buy a lot of games, and some people might want a longer thing like it's so subjective for every single person 
yeah so this this is like yeah this is a decision you have to make uh for yourself and you know this is why you should do research on the games beforehand this is why you listen to you know you watch people play them you listen to podcasts people talking about them you listen to top down perspective every week thursday nights friday afternoons <laughs> yep uh to hear about all the games uh that are out yeah um but yeah no i'm also with john i have paid much more for shorter games uh that i played by myself <laughs> and i've been fine with that and sometimes i feel a little burned with that and you know what's going to happen and you know that's just how it happens yeah yeah all right paul you next yeah Thomas writes in and says, since none of the Canadian teams are going to make the playoffs this year, do you guys want to start talk your hockey talk sessions a little early? Fuck no. I'm not talking about hockey. I'm <laughs> so angry. I don't follow hockey. So Why are you I'm angry so about hockey? Angry. Because, like, did, did you see what happened tonight? No. <laughs> no. The Canucks were winning, and then they threw it all in the third. <laughs> I mean, that's the Canucks. That's not the first time that's happened. No, that's Need I Canadian point out the teams. Vancouver Riots? I mean, that's just Canadian teams lately. Mm. They've been all so bad. But uh, I don't want to talk about it because I live in Calgary, and the Flames are fucking terrible. Mm -hmm. Better than Edmonton, but that's not saying much. Or are we <laughs> losing to Edmonton now? I don't even remember what the standings are anymore. You know, I don't either because I stopped. Like, I, I remember, like, I think two weeks off. ago on a stream, uh, the standing of Canadian teams came up. And I couldn't yeah. believe that, like, five of the – no, six of the bottom seven teams were Canadian. Yeah. That's a bummer. Yeah. I uh, When my when uh, my dad was down here, it was uh, conveniently the same time as the Flames being in San Jose. So <laughs> we, we went to a hockey game to watch them play the Sharks. I, that was probably the first time I had been to a hockey game in, like, a solid – 15 years yeah um but they won so i guess that was cool there was a lot of people wearing blue and every time the flames would score like six people would stand up <laughs> nice i'm glad we have that much representation down there <laughs> yeah there was actually a few people with calgary jerseys and i was just constantly like i wonder why you're here like yep. why, why are you in san jose Teamsters. Like, i wonder if you're the wife of a player or like the brother or something yeah maybe who knows yeah here's the yeah. standings uh, bottom of the league up, Toronto, Edmonton, yeah, yeah, Vancouver, Columbus, Calgary. Where's Where's Columbus? Uh, Ohio, Ohio. That's not Canadian. Well, I'm telling you, bottom of the league up. Oh, okay. So, hey, so we're not last. We're like yeah. fifth last. Uh, Toronto, Edmonton, Vancouver, Columbus, Calgary, Winnipeg. Then it goes Buffalo and Arizona. Then it's Montreal and then Ottawa. Ottawa is currently the best team, and they are currently uh, 10th worst in the league. Yeah. How many people are in the league or teams? Uh, aren't there like 30-something? I I don't know. Yo, we're beating the Canucks, though. That's all that matters. <laughs> I thought the only thing that matters is beating yeah, the Oilers. It, it looks like there's no, actually 30 teams in the league. Like, just fuck the Oilers. As far as I'm concerned, they don't exist. Okay. <laughs> Fighting words. All right. Come at me. There's, a, there's the hockey talk. I'll be in you next weekend. <laughs> what are you going to Edmonton for? Uh, grandma's birthday. Ah, okay, cool. Yeah. I'm going to be there in a month for Game Developer Expo, so. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> Game Developer Expo up there? <laughs> they invited me to talk about streaming. I've never, I mean, even, I've never even heard of the game developer. It's, it's only their, it's only their second going. year. I'm surprised it exists. Okay. <laughs> it's only their second year, so. Are you guys going to um, the Calgary Expo? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. That's cool. I'm not, but. You are should. You... <laughs> no. Yo, what would it take for you to do it? What if we got top-down perspective panel? Oh I would have. God, no. Oh, I'd come up for that, but it would have, have to be. You have to come up for that. You're the host. I mean, we're all the hosts. No. Like, Sean, let's be real. <laughs> I mean, like, we're all the hosts. You're the lifeblood, Sean. Uh, you are literally top-down perspective on Twitch. <laughs> well, that's not true. I have my own. That's just that's the one I usually use. Oh, okay. That's the one connected. I, I mean, I don't stream. That's the thing. So I don't really have one for the most part. <clears throat> gotcha. Uh... 
Thomas has some more hockey stuff here. Also, when do you think the next time a Canadian hockey team is going to win the Stanley Cup? And which one? I'm not as optimistic about Connor McDavid as most, but maybe Edmonton could get yet <laughs> another first round draft. Those are like nicotine to them at this point. And it's done them so much. Eventually, all these first round picks are going to get them something. Yo, they're playing They're playing the long con, man. They're going to keep losing horribly every year until they have basically a new Detroit team. <laughs> That'd be amazing, though. Then they become a dynasty. The Edmonton dynasty, again, would be amazing. No, it wouldn't. It would be insufferable as a Calgarian. <laughs> okay, for us, it'd be annoying, but yeah. Yeah. Uh, if there's any Canadian team that probably has the best chance at this point, it would either be Ottawa or Montreal. Or Montreal. They've always been the strongest teams in Canada. I would love to see Toronto just do an upset and actually play once and just like win everything i would love to see the maple leafs make to the finals that would be incredible i know so many people that would actually lose their shit and take time off work because it's such a rare occasion they're never going to see it again if it happens i mean what we've already had calgary get to the finals and then lose we've had vancouver get to the finals and lose montreal got close they got to the conference finals and lost yeah within the past couple of years yeah so I don't know. Whichever, I would. I think it's time for Toronto to stop being shitty. It would be nice, <laughs> the dream. Although as Calgarians, we can't talk right now. No, we can't. <laughs> we had. We were so close last year, and by so close, I mean we got destroyed by Anaheim. But yeah. So I'm gonna like give a secret to all you Americans who think you're hot shit. The reason why your teams are doing so good is because your your dollar is worth more. And you're taking our players that were born here. And, like, this is where they cut their teeth, man. This is where they learn how to play hockey is in Canada. You're taking them away from us. Our national resources are gone. Thanks, America. <laughs> Thanks, hockey players. Yeah, hockey players are national resource. That's why our economy is so shitty. <laughs> <laughs> We've got to wait a generation to get them back again. Yeah. we got to grow. we got to grow the new crop. Yeah been a stale year not a lot of rain i don't know what the fuck that means let's move on for the love of god not enough rain for the hockey rinks <laughs> shut up john <laughs> don't bring attention to my dumbassery shivani don't or donate shivani uh on twitter <laughs> i i thought it was a st i'm sorry i'm this is how my messages usually show up for donations shivani Sh donated a question <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your question donation, Shivani. Shivani writes, which video game characters fit the most closely to your own personality? Oh, that's a real hard question. I okay. mean, Sean is Wait. obviously a Sura. I was gonna say, why don't we, why don't we answer for each other? Okay. Yeah. Sure. Also, there's no way I'm a, I'm a Sura. That guy gets angry all the time. <laughs> John is Otacon. I was going to set John <laughs> as Sonic the Hedgehog. Wait, what? Uh, I'll, I'll maybe take Otacon, but Sonic? Don't you remember that one time where we were- Where I went we, really fast? Where we <laughs> where you just had to keep going faster. <laughs> I couldn't stop. And then when we weren't going fast, you just like crossed your arms and were like tapping your foot. And you was like, come on. <laughs> uh, in the chat, that Sean is Hyrule Warriors. <laughs> I don't know why that got me. Good you're the, the, you're the entire game, Sean. Congrats. <laughs> Who said that? Konagami, uh, you got Konagami. me. Konagami, <laughs> you got me. Um, who would who would Paul be? That's uh, a good question. I'd actually like to know. Mm. I. I have a character in mind, but I can't think of their name right now. So I'm trying to piece together. That guy from Resident Evil, what you buying? The shopkeeper. He's the shopkeeper. What are you buying? What are you selling? <laughs> Ask the question. He struck me more as Barry than anyone ever going Resident Evil. I was trying to think of a good Barry line, and there's so many. Mm -hmm. I couldn't pick What one. is this? I'm hearing Paul is Wario. Paul would be Honey Pop. I guess you know apparently what? instead of video games, take... your video games instead of characters. Uh, I'm hearing John is Mario, but Mario is the ref from Punch Out. 
<laughs> because I am, because for some reason I imagine that version of Mario would run a museum. Wow. Holy shit. Oh, it's that's getting like, hard to breathe from like laughing. really funny. But the Mario as the ref from Punch Out. That's like super specific and also just a really <laughs> shitty answer or character to be. It's like Mario when he retired from adventuring. He's like, oh, I'm just going to stay in the ring. Yeah, like he got like an ad, like he actually got a job. Like you, you have to, you actually, have to pay rent now. Got to pay okay. the bill somehow. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Michael writes in with the last question: Thoughts on the Leafy versus H three H three fight on YouTube that came out recently? I don't know what any of. Don't that know means. anything I about don't... it. Don't care. I don't want to talk about it. YouTube that. drama right. is bad. Yep. And his second question is: um, Also, are you guys doing anything for Easter this Sunday? Sleeping. Someone else also asked if Canadians have Easter, and yes, of course we have Easter. In fact, that's when the Easter Bunny it's... gives us all ice picks so we can dig our cars out for the spring. I was gonna say it's a month earlier than American Easter, but no. that works too. That's pretty good too. Is it really? No. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, he Sean, you there. lived here for like eighteen years. <laughs> well, no, no I, but I don't know what American. If American Easter was different, it's based on Christianity. <laughs> I'm not Christian. Why Fair would I know enough. That? Fair enough. Um, what I was gonna say though is Canadians get uh time off. They get a holiday because of it. I don't. And I keep saying to people like, why? If I why don't we have Monday off? I don't want to come to work. It's Easter. But anyways, are you guys doing anything for uh for Easter? No. Yeah, I don't know. No. They're doing an egg hunt? Nope. Nope. I wish, man. I wish. I might see what my nephews are up to, but other than that, I'm just That's chilling the thing. out. If you're not like a little kid or religious, I guess, like, like if you don't like follow your, your like practice, I guess I should say, you, you, it's like a non thing. What are you going to yeah. do? Like, you I made myself kid, an egg hunt to find them all. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy that if you're a kid, because. It turns into nothing later. I mean, it's really, it's just, it's just an excuse to buy cheap chocolate for an adult. Like the day after. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And I don't I don't even eat chocolate, so it's like nothing. It's really nothing for me. This is just a weekend. Which, don't get me wrong, I am stoked that it's the weekend. Yeah. All right. Um, that'll do it for questions. Uh, top 10 perspective at gmail.com, at TDP podcast, and the Facebook group. And John's P.O. Box are all great ways to send questions in or to donate a question um, to us. Those are the ways about going to do that. Uh, what are your guys' games of the week? King of Demons. I don't want to say The Division, but it's probably that. Uh, mine is Quantum Break. Cool. Yeah, but that's not my final uh, response on Quantum Break, just for the record. Gotcha. Because I can't talk about that yet. <laughs> gotcha <laughs> um, we'll be back next week thanks for tuning in everyone bye